Now to politics. 27 years after Nigeria's former military president, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, famously stepped aside to bring his eight-year rule to a close, Nigerians still remember the regime with mixed feelings. While some Nigerians blame his government for some of the problems still bedeviling the country, others feel the regime should be given credits for some political reforms and infrastructural development initiated by General Babangida. Senior political correspondent Ayogdele Ozubakon takes us back into the IBB military regime, reputed to have midwifed the longest transition program in the history of Nigeria. We have come with the strongest determination to create an atmosphere in which positive efforts shall be given the necessary support for lasting solutions. On the 27th of August 1985, General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida overthrew the then Major General Muhammad Buhari as Nigeria's head of state in the palace coup. Showed General Babangida as a soldier who loved power. The ascension to power of General Babangida initially received patronage from Nigerians. Before long, he squandered the goodwill he enjoyed from Nigerians following human rights abuses, economic hardship and unending transition program. Catalogue of human rights abuse, muscling of thoughts and opinions. For eight years that he ruled, his regime was characterized by crises and controversies. The self star military president survived two coup attempts against his regime. The first was in December 1985 and led to have been led by General Maman Vasta, who was his childhood friend. Another field coup led by Major General Gideon Oka on the 22nd of April 1990 almost toppled his government. He finished the construction of the Third Milan Bridge, reputed to be the longest in the continent at that time. They ruled out. Some them cut them half up. What are we going to say? Human rights abuses were the order of the day, then, including the death of celebrated Nigerian journalist Delegiwa through a letter bomb in 1986. Propaganda, Propaganda will not want the Nigerian people's verdict to be respected. So he defied it, ignored it. It's a slap on the Nigerian people's face. It's a slap on the face of God. Because God, for once, gave us the freest election in the history of this country. The last straw that broke the back of the regime was the annulment of June 12, 1993 presidential election won by M.K. Abiola of the Social Democratic Party. The annulment led to widespread protests and political unrest across the country. This decision is unfair, unjust and consequently unacceptable. Yes. Yes. The lingering June 12 crisis led to the resignation of General Babangida August 26th, which he turned a step aside. 27 years after he left power, many Nigerians still remember his government with love or hate, depending on which side they stand. Ayodele Zubako, TVC News, Lagos. Political analyst Golaba joins us now for discussions on IBB's military regime. I'm wondering which uh, side you stand, uh, but I need you to consider the fact that General Bangida's eight-year regime was quite eventful. There's the structural adjustment program, the annulment of the presidential election, the issues of human rights abuse, among others. What do you make of that administration being considered the most corrupt and responsible for creating a culture of corruption especially politically in Nigeria. The irony of General Babangida's rule was the fact that he was a man who felt he knew Nigerians so much and he was gifted in using all the diabolical devices of governance. To, to master his hold on the country, and corruption came naturally to him as one of the tools to be used. Uh, apart from the human rights abuses, uh, the death of the murder 
of Delegiwa being one of the most uh, prominent ones, the incessant incarcerations of, of prominent human rights activists like Ganifa Wemi and, and the Lord, Babangida was so conceited that he believed that there was no Nigerian who was not wearing a price tag that he could not use the resources of state to pay for to elongate his, to elongate his stay. Mr. Bad, there were so, also bright sides, if I <laughs> might bought it very quickly, when you consider infrastructural development in roads and power, even in the health sector. But since we're talking politics, I want us to consider the fact that the June, the June 12 crisis, just a minute, Mr. Oba, the June 12 crisis led to the resignation of General Babangida. Some would say resignation isn't a virtue that is common 27 years after. He did not resign. You, uh, your, your mini documentary seems to have missed some point. He was not the one that enunciated the Third Mainland Bridge. He only completed it. It was enunciated under the administration of President Shehu, Shehu Shagari. So it was a project he met. And to be honest with you, I, I don't see any. The, the axis in which the third mainland fits into, you must remember, commenced under the Olusha Gwabasanjo regime. The, the expressway from Tinkan to Ibadan, or Joy in Ibadan. And Lake, the third mainland bridge was the phalange that the, uh, that the Shagari government enunciated, started, but it completed. Absolutely. Now, let's leave that aside. Let's leave that aside. On the issue of resignation, he did not resign. He was compelled by circumstance to, as he euphemized it, he used a peculiar euphemism, he euphemized it as stepping aside. He had a calculated, he had a calculated strategy to succeed himself, thinking that he could put his lackey, his lackey who had no substance to rule in, in power, and he left his, his most potent henchman to be the controller of events, and he thought he could ultimately su succeed himself. Nigeria should not be fooled. I think you made your point very clearly, Mr. Oba. Uh, unfortunately, that's how much time will permit us to take. But I need to note very clearly that our mini documentary uh, did state that he finished the construction of the third mainland bridge and not um, constructing it generally. But I'm also a very big thank you, Mr. Goloba. I'm afraid that's how much time will permit us. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7.